as to why governments, especially here in Ireland, are suddenly becoming so accommodating to the idea of this being, of things going back to the way they were, and uh, the restrictions on stopping. And also, you always say it's a Taliban thing, but that didn't really affect here in other places. Yes, I know and carry on going on everywhere, but something very interesting happened yesterday. A, a massive asteroid just missed the Earth. It was the size of Central Park in New York, and it whizzed past the air. The three thousand astronom, three million astronauts, which is extremely close, and uh, it, there was almost a total blackout on it until they said, "Oh, an asteroid is is, is appearing tonight. It's going to whiz by us, the, the size of the Central by us," and just like that. It wasn't announced before. Now, this happened before in 2009, where, or 2008, I can't remember, where a colossal asteroid, they were worried about hitting, and there was a complete blackout, even on astronomy sites, like Bad Astronomy and NASA. And the reason was, if the thing had to hit us, we would have been toast. And the same with this thing. Now, I've been speculating all along that it's, there's more, there seems to be more to this than the, than the, than just the virus. It just and, and then people say, oh, the great reason. But they could do that. They could do that tomorrow using the banks. There'd be no problem doing that tomorrow. You know, UBI could be done tomorrow. All that stuff could be done tomorrow. But it was always a niggling thing in the back of my head that there was a cosmic or environmental catastrophe or something that they were worried about beyond the Rona. And here, lo and behold, I mean, it was one of those things when I read the story, it was like, oh, that was it. It was almost like a sense of knowing it was weird that they were they were really concerned that that thing could have had a pop at the earth now you say three and a half million miles is you know uh, um, is, is close doesn't what they mean by that is if that's taken a deviation by a half a degree towards the earth that three million miles of swimming swallowed up in no time and suddenly it's flying right into the earth's orbit uh, this could be done by a few things the gravitational pull of other planets other asteroids in its immediate vicinity that might knock against or like a like a pool table balls or uh, you know outgassing can do this where gas are released and so they change the direction of it but where they worried about this one that flew by the other because i'm saying i'm seeing an awful lot of relieved faces and stuff in the media today now on top and the way it was just announced tonight a massive asteroid will fly by will zip by at colossal speed and this one was this one is so colossal that it was and considered so dangerous that the next one in terms of being as dangerous as that is not expected till 2080 80 sorry 2180 so another what, 60 odd years and that's how significant this thing was now we've had a few asteroid clip and clippings but you know in the area this year as if we were going through some kind of a uh, asteroid heavy part of the solar system or whatever i know they come i know they, they orbit through the earth cloud and stuff like that like comets but <clears throat> we do know from an um um that things can enter from strange angles now so it seems to me that we pr that might have been it that might have been the reason for it hello info person this is anton and it's that time of the year again it's time for us to talk about apophis the asteroid discovered back in 2004 that for many years has been identified as a potentially hazardous asteroid that could strike planet Earth possibly as soon as a few decades from now. And being a relatively large object and also being relatively massive, with the size right here as you can see being larger than the Empire State Building, if this object did strike planet Earth, it would most likely create a crater of about 1.5 kilometers and would also produce an explosion equivalent to about 880 megatons of power. That's close to 20 times bigger in power than the famous Tsar Bomba that was exploded by the Soviet Union a few decades ago, which was the biggest explosion ever. And is also about 4 times more powerful than the famous Krokatoa volcano in Indonesia that back in 1800s created a lot of chaos and destruction and also lowered the temperature of the planet by at least several degrees, also creating these unusual optical effects that were captured in several paintings at the time 
including surprisingly the very famous painting The Scream by Edvard Munch, with the unusual skies represented here most likely being the results of this particular explosion of Krokatoa. But what we're discussing today is the fact that this is no longer a hazardous asteroid. As of a few weeks ago, NASA has officially removed this asteroid from its famous, or more appropriately infamous, SNELS, Center for Near Earth Object Studies. And here, under the impact risk, Apophis used to be pretty high on the list of impact probabilities. But as you can see, it's no longer on the list. And there's a really, really good reason for that. It has now been officially ruled out to collide with planet Earth for the next 100 years, which means that we don't really have to worry about that particular asteroid anymore. But how do we know so, and why is NASA suddenly convinced that it's no longer a risk? Well, there's a very good reason for that. It's actually because of this. The extremely recent observations from some of the most modern telescopes, and specifically radar observations, which allowed the scientists to very precisely recalculate its orbit and orbital parameters for the next 100 years. And the actual achievement, technologically speaking, is extremely, extremely impressive. Now, first of all, this object is roughly around 340 meters across. That's about 1,000 feet or so. And on March 5th of 2021, the approach of Apophis to Earth allowed the scientists to finally use some of the modern telescopes, specifically this huge 70 meter or 230 foot radio antenna known as Goldstone Deep Space Communication Complex, this is near Barstow in California, whose job was to receive the signals sent from another telescope, known as Green Bank Telescope, located in West Virginia in one of the most radio quiet locations on the planet. And the purpose of this telescope was to transmit radio signals kind of similar to what a Arecibo telescope used to be able to do as well before it collapsed. And so now the Green Bank Telescope took over the role of the largest radar transmitter on the planet. And so by transmitting radio waves and hitting the asteroid, which then reflected the radar waves back to Earth, both of the telescopes were able to create these images you see right here. Now this doesn't look like much, but this was enough for the scientists to determine pretty much everything about its orbit and also learn a few more things about it as well. Now interestingly, this is at a distance of about 17 million kilometers away from the planet, which is about 11 million miles or so. And that also means that they were able to achieve a really impressive resolution of about 38 meters per pixel. And considering that this is at a distance of over 40 times as far away as the moon is from planet Earth, this is a really impressive achievement. Now, suddenly this morning the Irish newspaper is full of, like, empty ending restrictions and stuff like what, what, what out of blue? And how we, the, the politicians would be vehemently against lockdowns and the two-tiered eating thing in restaurants has to end and kids have to go back to school and the economy will be completely open in a couple of months. It's like, what? Where does all go from? And, you know, at the same time, we're having record numbers of Rona cases from the needle craft in the hospitals. I mean, something doesn't make sense there. On top of that... La the last 24 hours, I cannot believe the psychotics I've seen online. Just about every psychotic in my life has shown up. As if they, uh, as if they were like, the, the, it was the last chance for a feed uh, before the world was wiped out. It really felt like that. So where are these fuckers coming from? I am. Uh, and... I mean, and and and, and the this mental illness of them, the extreme mental illness of them, was incredible to behold, and it was just unbelievable. Like you could just see them foaming at the mouths as they were typing, uh, uh, on their into Twitter into whatever program it was in. It's just fascinating stuff to watch. Was that you know we, we I know was that connected to the, the thingy in the sky? Were they Renfield and Canarying like crazy? I think they were. I think they were. I think we I think we could be getting a revelation here of what the real story was. I mean, you don't have a bio that size just misses only be announced on the day it just missed us. You know, they are it's they're always giving us updates. And there was there were some pretty heavy some pretty heavy ones this year, you know. Fuck it makes you wonder. It really, really makes you fucking wonder. If that was, this was all about this. If this was all about this. And we, you know, I mean, I mean, what can you do? They'll never tell you the truth anyway. And you'll always get one story and be given another. And 
suddenly there's all kinds of drugs being approved for the ping pong and all this kind of thing uh, and it's all very kind of positive oh we've we, we, you know we've nearly vaccinated you know it's like suddenly there, there, there's a massive push to vaccinate everyone right then then there's an asteroid appears in the sky and then someone else says oh nearly everyone's max nearly everyone is vaccinated now what it just uh, just really makes me wonder if this was the real cover st- if the va- if the scandemic was the cover story for that asteroid yesterday if they probably didn't know until a couple of weeks ago or maybe a week ago that it was going to miss us and uh, they couldn't tell us and greg moffat had a thing about it on legalized freedom where he said it was like um, they decided you know if the world is going to end it's better if everybody's at home with their families and uh, yeah i mean wow and ever since i saw the film uh, melancholia watched the classic old film when worlds collide it's all i've been thinking about lately as is the possibility of this and i don't know why i don't know why but there you go there you have it it's just wow was that the reason because i i found it hard to believe from the beginning that a seasonal virus that kills you know and yeah it was a bad seasonal virus and it has been it's there has been bad ones in the past that killed the same kind of people the same demographics this is why hospital trolleys are packed with patients every year and elderly folks they're all getting the seasonal viruses and uh, a rolling stone dies on the day the planet a rolling stone misses the earth so there's a kind of a, a poetic a poetic thing there to charlie what's his demise a rolling stone vanishes as a rolling stone vanishes a space rolling stone and, you know of course it's it's impossible to know who to believe anymore like the the cynicism of the public is remarkable now I was watching, like, when you read the Irish newspapers now, the government makes these positive announcements about opening up and stuff. The the public are like, you know, you're lying bastards, you're fucking liars, you lie, you lie, you lie. And someone pointed out that Israel played this rules that they gave everyone freedom. And then the ping-pongs, the ones who got second Jabberwockies, had infected everyone else. And the next thing you know, they had to have a big harsh lockdown. I do wonder, you really do fucking wonder. Let's see what happens. If if they start suddenly being more enthusiastically pro opening up and doing it, we'll know that, that thing that flew by last night probably or might have been it. Take care and I love you so. And so by analyzing the data from these two observatories, the scientists were able to recalculate the 2029 approach, reducing this uncertainty here to only a few kilometers. Now, previously, the scientists weren't sure how close it's going to approach to planet Earth. The actual difference was in hundreds of kilometers, but this has been dropped to only a few kilometers across. And we now know that it's still going to pass pretty close to planet Earth. And this animation here is going to illustrate how close and so it's actually going to pass um, somewhere in the area where we have the um, geostationary satellites, but it's not going to collide, obviously. And now we are certain that it's not going to collide in the next 100 years, simply because of the certainty of its orbit. But most importantly, this rules out any potential collision in 2068. This was the one that people were actually worried about, simply because of the uncertainty involved in previous calculations, but this recent observation totally removed any doubt. It is not going to collide for sure. And all of this was thanks to the use of these two really large telescopes, with one transmitting and one receiving, something known as the bi-static experiment. And this actually allowed the scientists to double the strength of the signal and thus receive much higher quality images. Although in this case, it's of course radar images. With the current estimate for the potential collision in 2068 being something like 1 in 2.6 million. And that's actually extremely, extremely low, and so it is most likely going to pass really far from the planet. But because of these new observations, the scientists now have a chance to potentially also study the way that this asteroid is spinning, while at the same time determining what sort of a shape it has as well. Now even though in this simulation it sort of more or less looks spherical, some of the other recent observations suggested that it could be bilobed. It could have two larger 
protrusions like you see in this image right here from California Academy of Sciences. And this is very typical of asteroids that are slightly larger and spin because the spinning effect does produce these two parts that slowly start to separate and eventually might even become their own asteroids. But more importantly, by using these observations from March of 2021, the scientists will be able to calculate the exact orientation asteroid will have when it's going to be passing near Earth in 2029. And they can now even predict what is possibly going to happen to this asteroid and maybe even send a probe or two here to then see what happens to the surface of this asteroid. Some scientists predicted that there could be asteroid quakes, which could occur because of the close passage to planet Earth and because of the tidal effects this asteroid is going to experience, or maybe even some other unexpected effects that we currently cannot predict. And what's even more interesting is that when it does pass in 2029, it's going to be visible to certain parts of the world, specifically the eastern hemisphere, and people might be able to see it in the night skies without any telescope, without any binoculars. As a matter of fact, it's actually going to look kind of like this, like a tiny, tiny star moving relatively fast across the night skies. And so chances are, those countries you see right here, so pretty much everything in Southeast Asia and Asia Pacific, might have a sudden tourist boom as everyone tries to flock there to try to catch the glimpse of this beautiful asteroid, something that actually happens only once in a lifetime, I guess. But following this passage, it's very likely we're not going to hear about this until 2068, and after this, maybe never, because we don't really think it's going to collide with our planet for at least a few decades, but more likely a few centuries from now, possibly even ever. And so the name Apophis, the god of destruction, is no longer really appropriate for this particular asteroid. We might as well give this name to some other asteroid, but most likely an asteroid that we haven't really discovered yet. As a matter of fact, if we go back to that list I showed you initially, none of the asteroids pose any threat to us anymore in the next foreseeable future. The one with the highest collision chance between 2095 and 2119 is actually really tiny, it's only about 7 meters across with the chance of collision being about 4.7%. And the largest uh, rock on this list is the asteroid Bennu, with a relatively small collision chance over 100 years from now, actually over 150 years from now. So in that sense, there is really nothing to worry about for now. But usually when I make these videos about asteroids, I also like to make some potential predictions about what the press is going to be saying. And in this case, I think the press is going to go crazy next year. In 2022, we expect this relatively small rock about 13 meters or about 40 feet across to come relatively close to planet Earth, but the chance of collision here is only about 2 to 3 in a thousand. And so sometime next year, I'm pretty sure there are going to be a lot of images like this, and possibly like this, telling us more about this rock that is very likely going to pass safely across the night skies, but is also going to give us an opportunity to study asteroids in a little bit more detail. But this particular technique that the scientists used for this study and also the ability to very precisely recalculate the orbits of asteroids is something that we're going to need to use with many other asteroids in order to determine their dangers. As I'll be telling you more in another video that's going to be coming out really soon, these particular techniques and these particular studies are absolutely essential because there's still a relatively high chance from a collision from an asteroid we haven't found yet. And that is something that we need to be aware of, something that we need to always keep track of. And so these um, observatories and these asteroid trackers are very essential, with SNELOS itself being an absolutely crucial program necessary for the programs related to planetary defense. But we'll talk more about this in some of the future videos. On that note, you can relax for now, because Apophis is not really going to be destroying anything anytime soon.